And, uh, and I'm going to read the scripture for us in English. It's from Colossians chapter 3, verses 3 to 10. And we can uh, go ahead and follow along in our Bibles, or you could see the Word of God uh, up on the projector screen as well, whether you're worshiping here in person or at home. Let's go ahead and, and read the, from the Word of God. Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all of God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up from you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and, we also, uh, told, and, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit for this reason. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will throughout all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's pray as we dive into the word this morning. God, we thank you because you are good. Thank you that you're the fountain of wisdom, even as our brother Al was saying, Lord, we don't need to just run around all over. We can actually just rest on you and be present with you, Lord God. The amazing thing about wisdom is, and growth, and knowledge, and maturity, is it's available for us, Lord, as a gift when we seek it, when we find it, when we ask. Whether we're younger, whether we're older, whatever stage we're in, whether you're in middle school, or high school, or working, or retired, you can find the Lord when you seek him. Just simply ask. God, I pray that you would guide us with your wisdom, guide us with faith, guide us with courage, as we as we move forward in, in, in uh, closing one season and entering into a new season, Lord. God, we continue to pray for, for this, uh, this world, this country, our city, our valley, Lord. We lift it up to you, God, and we ask that we would be able to be your presence wherever we find ourselves, that we would be blessed to be a blessing, God, that we would be people of peace, persons of shalom, who really um, pass on the peace of Christ through our lives, our words, and our actions. We continue to pray, Lord, for, for this country, this world that so desperately needs you, Lord, for um, those experiencing sickness, war, challenge, Lord. We also pray for uh, leaders of the land, especially in these economic talks in which so many depend on, Lord God. And um, Lord, we just en entrust and, and seek, Lord, your wisdom and your guidance. Meet us, God, in our questions, even in the questions that we ask today. Encuéntranos, Señor, en nuestras preguntas, en nuestras dudas, Dios Santo. Meet us in these questions. Meet us in moments where we're not sure when we, we say that prayer. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief, God. Lord, that's enough for you, and you work with that, and you do amazing things through that kind of faith, Lord. You move us toward you. You never run away from us. And for that, we're grateful, Lord. So today, we want to be able to draw near to you as you always draw near to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So today, we're actually finishing up this series that we've been on in the book of Colossians that we've been calling Visible and Invisible, where we're seeing Jesus as the Lord of all, where we're no longer just compartmentalizing our lives with our faith lives or church lives or religious lives and then the rest of life but we're asking God to be Lord of all 
of what's visible and invisible, of what we present and project to others, and also our insides, our emotions, our actions, all of that. And we've been on this series in the book of Colossians, really diving deep into that together and what it means to live life in the Spirit. And today is actually a very, very important day when it comes to celebrating life in the Spirit and celebrating the Holy Spirit, because today, throughout the church history and around the world, this is a special day um, in the church calendar, in the church rhythm, called Pentecost. Some of you have heard of that day before, but so we want to wish everyone a very happy Pentecost today. And Pentecost is actually um, the birthday of the church, which we read about in Acts chapter 2, um, where the Holy Spirit comes down over God's people, and that descending of the Holy Spirit is what gives birth and new life to God's family, to the church. And um, sometimes uh, we, we, we can add a, a particular, to a particular name, we, we, we can attach that to an object or a product um, at times, even without realizing it. And maybe we can do that with the word Pentecost, right? We can think like, wait a minute, I've heard of that word before. It, doesn't that mean a certain kind of church or a certain kind of way of doing things in worship? Um, yes, that is the, the faith tradition and the denomination of Pentecostalism, which we'll talk about in just a second, but Pentecost is actually this event that happened in Acts 2 where the Holy Spirit came down over God's people and gave birth to the church, to the people of God. And so we, we all celebrate and we rejoice in this beautiful day of Pentecost, um, which we celebrate always 50 days after Easter. And but But the truth is that sometimes we can confuse a particular name with an object or a product even without realizing it you know and I I think about my my grandma my abuela growing up who um, always um, confused she never thought it was confusing but we all know it was but she always confused the product of denim jeans every type of dem denim she called them all Levi's which Many of us probably grew up doing that, and especially if you had a Spanish-speaking uh, household, or maybe not, or whatever your family was, all denim was called Levi's. There was no distinction between all types of denim and Levi's. It's like, hey, give me that Levi's right there, or, or whatever it may be. And um, I remember um, I attempted to change her way of thinking, but it didn't go anywhere. When I would try to explain it to her that this material is called denim, they're not all called Levi's. And uh, growing up, I remember looking forward to uh, Christmas because my uh, grandma, my grandma Lupe, would always uh, spend Christmas with us. And, um, you know, it was exciting because she would ask, what do you want for Christmas? And especially as I was growing up and getting a little older, thinking about styles and all of that, um, I would be excited about new clothes and, you know, getting a new pair of Levi's for Christmas. And I'd ask my grandma for new Levi's and she'd say, all right, got you covered. Christmas morning comes and it's a bunch of denim jeans, but no Levi's. So something is off here. And I would try to, to explain to grandma, these aren't Levi's. They're just a generic brand. These are swap meet brand. Anyone there with me? I, I was there for sure. The, these, are, these are the generic store brand. They're not <laughs> Levi's. And uh, you know, I was excited on that Christmas morning, but only to find Jordash or other knockoff brands, right, that were there. Um, but then I would try to explain that to my grandma, and it was really like being between a rock and a hard place. And I'd say, well, grandma, abuela, I really wanted Levi's, to which she would respond, and I got you Levi's. They're right there. You even have three pairs. I got three for one. What else do you want? And, you know, she, we would just go back and forth, back and forth. And there was this phrase she would say in Spanish. And, and I always remember her. She passed away in 2019. Uh, still have dear, dear memories of her. Uh, but she would just say in those frustrating moments, a ti quien te entiende. It's like, who even understands you anyway? So just whatever, just leave, leave, it, leave, it, leave it alone. And you know, same with Charlotte, with her grandma, uh, just all soda is called Pepsi to her. So it's a never ending battle. And maybe there's something like that for you as well. Um, but we've learned to let go and to let God. 
that's the lesson for today. Let grandmas be grandmas. But, um, you know, and just on, on a side note of that, that's part of what, what uh, a command that the Lord gives us, right? To honor our mother and father, to honor our parents, to honor our grandparents. And I know that's kind of messy for some of us, so there's no exact rule for that, but there is that honor. How can you honor the, uh, the, those that God has called you to honor? And the same with, with this family, right? This faith family. There are no exact rules. Of we do this in that situation, but the principle we do hold on to is that we choose to honor each other, to honor, love, and respect each other. But anyway, uh, just in the same way that my grandma thought all denim was Levi's, a similar thing occurs with the word Pentecost, right? If Pentecost means anything, sometimes to people in, in the church world or whether they're familiar with it or not, they, they think of the, the faith tradition or the denomination of Pentecostalism, which, you know, is pretty standard in, in, in our area here and in the West Coast and different parts of the world, but it's actually one of the the newest um, denominations. In 1906, there was this big revival down in Southern California, what they called the Azusa a Street Revival, and uh, we can talk more about that in another sermon, but um, yeah, sometimes people can confuse Pentecostalism with the word Pentecost, but, um, and, and it's, it's a very valid and, and, and wonderful faith tradition as well, um, just like all faith traditions, has its strengths, has its, its areas where, where we need each other to, to grow. Um, but um, yeah, maybe for you, you grew up in that and you just thought that's what Christianity was. And it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful um, tradition and perspective. But the amazing thing is that God has given uh, the, the church, the family of God, is a tree with different branches. And we all get to learn from each other and grow in that as well. As Jesus himself even says that my father's house is a big house with many different rooms. So there are ways that we can all learn from one another. And if you're interested in, in any more questions about that, we can di dive deeper in the month of August during our Q&A time. But today we're really celebrating Pentecost, which is the church's birthday. So that's a real big happy birthday to all of us um, on Pentecost. That's what we celebrate. And it's this moment, right, in Acts 2 where the Holy Spirit came down and that was the beginning of our life together as God's family, as the church. Pentecost is this amazing point in the story of Christianity where um, God's family came to life, became fully alive and became the church here on earth. In fact, all of us who trust in Jesus and who confess Christ as our Lord, today we find meaning on, on this day because um, we realize that the only way that we can have a, a clearer and closer understanding and relationship with God is remembering that God comes to us. The Holy Spirit came to us. We didn't get to God on our own. And um, again, to understand what, what, uh, what this day means is really to understand um, something about God, which is that the God that we worship is a God of covenant. And I think we have a slide up for that, and you can go ahead and write this down. The God that we worship is a God of covenant, and Dios que adoramos es un Dios de pactos. A God of covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is uh, God's deals and dealings with humanity. We see uh, uh, what I even mentioned, right, with uh, God and Abraham, God and a number of different people throughout hi history and scripture. Um, those deals and dealings are called covenants. And what we see throughout scripture is really there's, uh, in, in covenants, there's always going to be a pattern where there's the origin of the covenant or the promise of the covenant and then the fulfillment of that covenant. So in, in some ways, right, the ways that we can understand the scriptures are in the Old Testament, are the origins, are the, the promises uh, of the covenant, and then in the New Testament is the fulfillment of the covenant. And um, that's putting it in very simple terms, but that's one way to understand um, uh, a lot of the story of scripture the origin of covenant covenant, and the fulfillment of covenant, or the, or the beginning of promise and the fulfillment of promise. 
And so this, this day of Pentecost used to be called in the Old Testament the Feast of Weeks, which actually celebrated when uh, Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, with the law of God. Some of you remember that story in Mount Sinai where Moses went up, came down with the commandments, and um, that, that was something that was celebrated. That was the origin of this covenant. But then Pentecost actually serves as the fulfillment of this covenant where it's not just the law of God coming down but it's the spirit of God coming down over us where now we don't just live by law but we live by the spirit the Holy Spirit of God and so just as the law uh, uh, that original law that Moses came down with that was a gift from God the gift of the Holy Spirit is also a gift from God a gift to you, to me, to us. And we read about this in, in, the, in, uh, in the scriptures, in the New Testament. And just to be clear, whenever we, we talk about the, the scriptures as a whole, the Old Testament, New Testament, the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, you have to know this, they're never competing against each other, okay? Never put the scriptures against each other. They're not competing against each other. They're collaborating together. So you, we have to see there, with, with ask, ask the Spirit to give us eyes to see, ears to hear. Where's the collaboration here? Where's the origin of this promise and the fulfillment of this promise? It's all telling a single story of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. So together, the, uh, God's covenants, God's works are working all together throughout the Scripture to tell this story of redemption for all people, for all of humanity, for all of creation. And here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, we read these words, if we can put verse 5 and 6 up again. It says, The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up from you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. That has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. So just a couple of of brief things within that passage, right? As it connects to even this special day where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit amongst God's people. It's so important for us to remember that God, the Holy Spirit, and I believe we have a slide for this and you can write it down. God, the Holy Spirit, has come down to us. El Espíritu Santo ha descendido sobre nosotros. We don't achieve connection with the Holy Spirit on our own. We don't achieve it by what we've done or what we haven't done or how much we know or how much we don't know. But the Holy Spirit um, is, 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 is a gift from God to us. It's not a result of our own self-enlightenment or, or our own knowledge. But we're gifted with the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. And who has access to a gift? Those who receive it. So we have access to receiving the, the, the Spirit of God. God is proclaiming good news, this, this gospel, right, that we read about in this verse. And the Holy Spirit coming down and proclaiming that good news and empowering us to be sent out with that good news, that's really a reminder that God has come to us. You know, the Spirit of God can uh, give us that reality check and humble us, right? Reminding us, I have come to you. You didn't come to me. I took that step toward you. And again, that's the difference between this faith that we hold to and any other worldview, really. We believe fully with all of our hearts that God has come to us. The grace of the Holy Spirit is that God actually longs to come to you. He longs to draw near to you. He longs to have his spirit dwell in you. And the most amazing part of it all, to be honest is that God longs for that and all you need to do to receive the gift of the Spirit of God in you and through you is simply ask. Just ask. 
Ask the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, and God will. God will deliver in that. And again, we can, we, throughout the, the next couple of months, we can talk about what that looks like. It may not feel perfect, but the Spirit is perfectly in you, and that's what counts. Si quieres el Espíritu Santo, simplemente necesitas pedirle a Dios que te dé su Espíritu y si te lo va a dar. God has come to us. You can ask for the Holy Spirit. You can simply say, Lord God, I ask that your Holy Spirit come down in me. That your Holy Spirit reign in me. Espíritu Santo desciende sobre nosotros. And again, that's the amazing thing, right? And God is always going to be our model for how to live and how to, to, uh, to, to live life to the fullest. But the amazing thing is all we need to do to get God's help is ask. But how many times do we just go through this life, years and challenges and some of these ups and downs that we've talked about, where we don't ask? We just go through it on our own, isolated, disconnected, but we don't ask. You can ask God for help, and He will help you. You can ask God for wisdom, for guidance, for strength, and He will give it to you. And in the same way, us as the people of God, right? When we need help, guess what? There's a solution. What do you think it is? Ask. You know, I, I, as a pastor, this has been something I've navigated a lot throughout my life. And yes, by God's grace, I've been able to learn and grow in a number of ways. But the way that I've been able to experience enormous amount of um, breakthrough and even blessing in my life is not through my own works, but through asking, asking for help, asking for help when I can't. And that's something I like to pass on to other congregants, to other uh, uh, folks here in the church as well. When you don't know, ask. Ask God for help. Ask the people of God for help. And again, as a pastor, I've gone through that many times where, by God's grace, I do have several gifts. I, I have the gift of, 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 of uh, casting vision, of leadership, of preaching, of caring for people. But there is one spiritual gift that I don't have, I can't read minds. So if you need something, ask. <laughs> Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. None of us can read minds. The only way we can get the help that we need is by asking for it. And that's something that I've found to be true in pastoral care, but in other areas of life too. Do you know who help is available for? Help is not available to all who need help because we all need help. Help is available to those who ask for help and seek help. That's where the courage is. That's where the strength is to be able to say, God, I can't, so you must. I need your help. I need your spirit to come over me. I need God's people to surround me right now. When we don't know, ask, and it will be given to you. That's the amazing thing about the grace of our God that he rejoices in that. He doesn't hold it against us. Sometimes we think, oh, God or others are going to hold that against us. But just be honest with yourself. When someone has come to you seeking your help, seeking guidance, have you held that against them? No. It's probably even brought you and bonded you closer to them. But even moving forward here, you can ask God for that help. The Holy Spirit is called the helper, the counselor. And you can say, Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, help me. That's a prayer, by the way. That's already a beautiful prayer. Help me, God. Thank you, God. You can pray that in the mornings and the evenings. But then here in, uh, in verses 3 and 4, we read th this other part of, of this passage, and we can think about it in light of this gift of the Holy Spirit. It says this, right, um, in Colossians 3, three to four, verses 3 and 4, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
When we pray for you, let's pray for each other because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all of God's people. Wow, one way that we demonstrate the love we have for God is by praying for one another and the love that we have for God's people, for each other. It's amazing because in that first Pentecost in Acts 2, the, the, the apostles, they were all together in one place. It wasn't all of them just off on their own, doing their own thing and figuring things out. No, they were all together in one place. And here's the beautiful lesson in that, friends, brothers, sisters. In togetherness, we become open to God's presence. And we experience deeper intimacy with God in community when we're together. We come to know God intimately in the, content, in the context of doing life together. It all has its purpose. We see that in that first Pentecost, right, in the gift of the Spirit, God, the creator of the world, comes when we least expect it. The Spirit coming down on Pentecost is a reminder to us, to the church, to the people of God, that we can't control God. We can't contain God. God is free, and he'll come down and rest and revive and, and do incredible things through that freedom. Will we be open to those moments when the Spirit of God is over us, guiding us, directing us, strengthening us? The great God that we worship, we can't put that God, we can't put our Lord in a box. He'll constantly break out of that box and be free. God will constantly break through our barriers, our comforts, our expectations. And this day of Pentecost, the birth of the church, of the Holy Spirit freely coming down, without you, freely coming down over us and giving birth to the church, that's a reminder that God is not here to just take sides, but God is here to take over. God is here to reclaim all things back to himself. That's the point. That's the purpose. Sometimes the question should not be, well, how much of the Holy Spirit do you have? But the question is really, how much does the Holy Spirit have you? How yielded? How open are you to the Holy Spirit having you and containing you and guiding you? As the family of God, you know, that's, that is the amazing thing, right? The church became the church when every nation, tribe, and language was all together in one place. That's what happened in Acts 2. So when Paul here in Colossians is talking about the people of God, the family of God, he's talking about people of every nation dwelling together as his people, where the, the people of every tribe and, and tongue. And I want everyone to hear this and to be very clear on this, that God loves his family so we are called to love the family of God, too. When we bash on the family of God, there's consequences to that. God loves and cherishes God's family, his family. And I want us to be clear on this. The, the birth of the church came in that point, Pentecost, Acts 2, where every nation, tribe, and language was there. And, and I want us to write this down, and you can remember this about the family of God and the picture of, of, of the birth of the church. Um, and, and I think we have a slide for it. Remember that the God that we worship and the God that we gather around is the God of all nations and of all languages. So in God's family, there is no one culture or one language that is superior or inferior to another. It's all for God's glory. God loves all cultures, God loves all languages, and they all reflect the image of God. They all reflect the imago of God together, and that's why we move forward in that direction together as God's people, to reflect the imago of God, the image of God. The Holy Spirit is the translator, the connector, the one who connects us to God and to each other. So here at Imago, and we're going to continue to do this as God takes us to the next level, remembering that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you're a part of God's family. So each one of us is called to embrace our own God-given culture and also celebrate 
the God-given culture of our sister or brother in Christ. Not to compare, not to make them conform, or you to com- but to celebrate and embrace. Celebrate what God has done in you and embrace what God is doing in your sister and brother because it's God's family and we're called to love the family of God. So we see here in, in, um, in, in this, this day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming down freely to us and coming down to, every, to be the Lord of every nation, tribe, and language. And that's why here at Imago Church, you know, when we seek to be a multicultural community, that's not just a nice little addition, but to be a gospel-centered multicultural community where hope is built through restored relationships, that's a faithful witness to the image of God and to the church for the world. Here, and, when we, and in fact, it even reflects the birth of the church. That's what it looked like. Now I know, it's a lot harder. And I've wanted to. I, I've been in those moments of, of, of thoughtfulness or thinking, man, maybe this would go quicker if we were just a community where everyone already looked, thought, and acted the same. But no, that's a lot harder, but it's worth it. Because this gives a picture of the kingdom of God in eternity. People who wouldn't ordinarily be together gathered around the worship of Jesus. People from all nations coming together around this event of the Holy Spirit coming down. That's what gave birth to the church. We need to remember our roots. Whenever we lose our way, go back to basics. Go back to the roots. And we'll get some direction there. And sometimes... It can be hard to imagine that, right? What did it look like when the Holy Spirit came down? Was that messy? Was that awkward? People of different languages, people of different nations, all there together now being called the family of God? Well, yeah, it can look messy. It can look awkward, but it was a community full of grace. And that's what the church is. That's what God's family is. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's awkward. But it's always full of grace. Full of grace, love, truth, forgiveness. We can extend that to one another. We can live that out. That's part of what it means to be a covenant family. Remember we talked about covenant, God's promises to us. He calls us to be a family of covenant together, meaning that we're going to go through the highs and lows together with Christ at the center and community around us. At Pentecost, the birth of the church, It's not humans that got to God, but the Holy Spirit that came down to us and offered us new life together. New life where we wouldn't just exist, but new life where we would would be fully alive. And that's part of the calling in Colossians. Bring it all to God and be made fully alive in God. That's the invitation from God to you to do life together in this new season, in this new beginning together. So my prayer, friends, brothers, sisters, is is that as we conclude this season and enter into a new season, may we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we receive the gift of the Spirit of Jesus, of the Spirit of God that connects us to God, that connects us to each other. May we receive the gift of that will clear the way and lead the way for us in this new chapter. Amen? Let's pray. Let's pray together. Vamos a orar. God, we thank you because you always make a way. Lord, we rejoice in in, uh, the love that you have for us. We rejoice even in the sound of, of children in worship, Lord God, that is... Again, just a sign of life and a sign that you have great things in store, Lord. God, today we, um, we want to open ourselves, Lord, to just saying yes to you, to receiving the gifts that you freely give us. Sometimes, Lord, we don't experience them because we don't ask and we do not receive, Lord. But today, Lord, would you give us the the honesty, the humility, the courage to ask and to receive.
to knock and the door will be open, to seek and we will find, Lord. We will search for you and we will find you when we search for you with all of our hearts, God. We love you, Lord. We bless you. And we ask, God, that you would order our steps as we conclude one season and enter into a new season. As we close one chapter and enter into a new chapter, Lord, we know that nothing is impossible for you, Lord. So God, we give it all to you over these past several years, what has been the highs, the lows, the, the challenges, the, um, the, the rejoicing, the laughter, God. But when we think about it, Lord, we know that you have been incredible and faithful and good. So Lord, we just pray that you, God, would take your rightful place. Take your rightful place, Lord, as the center of our lives, as the center of our church. Spirit, come. Spirit, come and rain down on us. Spirit, come and rain over us. Espíritu Santo, desciende sobre nosotros. Lord, With you, nothing is impossible. And behold, you are doing a new thing. Forget what is past and hold on to what is to come. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you are the one who was and is and is to come. So Lord, as you direct us and you guide us, we know, Lord, that as we seek you, we will find you. And you will meet us, Lord, in those places, those places visible and invisible, those places seen and unseen, those places where heaven and earth meet. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, God. We thank you. Guide us, Holy Spirit, to do your will, your way, and to lean into this life